Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Brothers and Sisters in Christ Sunday School class at First Baptist Church of Brooklyn. Uh, when we last had our face-to-face -face class meeting, we were studying the book of Revelation, and we had just finished with chapter 2, where we're going to begin with chapter 3. It's been some time since we've had that study, so I'd like to go back and have a short review of chapters 1 and chapters 2, not as much in depth as we had when we were in the face-to-face -face class before, so as not to bore anyone who was in that class, but this will serve as uh, an opportunity to bring some of those who may not have been in that class up to speed with where we are in our study of the book of Revelation. So we welcome you. Uh, we're going to begin by opening with a word of prayer. So if you will, pray with me. Holy God, we just ask you to bless this lesson this morning. Lord, it is your word. It is the word that was sent by our Savior Jesus Christ to us for us to study. And Lord, there's blessings all throughout the word for our study of it. We ask that you bless us this morning. Help us to understand what you would have us to know in this. And Lord, just help us to use it in our daily walks of life. Guide us as we go through life. Forgive us when we fail you. It's in Jesus' name I pray and ask these things. Amen. <clears throat> in beginning with our review of the book of Revelation, one of the first things we think about is the title of the book. So many times we see uh, it called or referred to as the Revelations, uh, the book of Revelations, plural with an S on the end, and that's not correct. Uh, it is the book of Revelation, but more specifically, it is not the revelation of John the Apostle. It is not the revelation of John. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you would, just begin by reading with me uh, in chapter 1, verse 1, and we'll see how this book was handed down to you and I today and how God wants us to view this and how it was given to us. Beginning in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show him unto his, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So we see that the book of Revelation was given by the Father to the Son. And the Son sends it by way of an angel to John to give to his servants. And that's how we have the book. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, the word revelation uh, is uh, comes from the Greek word apocalypsis or apocalypsis, which means unveiling. Sometimes you just see the book titled The Apocalypse or The Apocalypsis. And that means an unveiling. Sometimes when I was younger, I always thought anything like that means it was hidden uh, because there's some language and some things in here, some symbols that we have a hard time understanding from time to time. But it is not intended to hide it from us. It is intended to reveal God's will to us. And that's what we're going to try to do is to open it up and look at his will as we continue our study here. Uh, we look at the person who penned this, and we say it is John the Apostle. Some would disagree with that. I tend to believe that it was John the Apostle that he uh, was given this while he was on a penal colony island called Patmos few miles off the coast of what we call modern-day Turkey. He was isolated out there by the emperor, I believe Domitian, because of his preaching the Word of God. In other words, the emperor Domitian just simply could not shut him up, so he said, we're going to put him on this prison island called Patmos, 
and all he can preach to is other prisoners and the rocks, and that would be fine. Uh, why Domitian chose to do this, we're not sure. Uh, instead of just simply chopping his head off, there is uh, a Jewish tradition that says Domitian did, in fact, try to kill John. He put him in a pot of boiling oil, and it did not kill him, and when he could not, he uh, simply exiled him to the Isle of Patmos. Now, that's not biblical, but that's something in Jewish tradition that's told about John. But while he was out there, uh, he wrote, he was given this in visions by our Lord Jesus Christ through an angel. And he records this. Um, we believe that it was written somewhere between 90 and 95 A.D., Domitian was uh, the Roman emperor at that time. Many people will say that John wrote it uh, when Nero was emperor. Nero, Nero was emperor uh, several years earlier and uh, would have imprisoned John somewhere around, uh, I believe, around 60 or 65 A.D. And it is believed that John wrote it then. Generally, those people that we, uh, believe that are what we refer to as preterist. These are people who believe that uh, all of the book of Revelation was, was fulfilled by A.D. 70 when Titus destroyed Jerusalem. Some preterists would agree that Christ is coming again in the future, but most preterists or those who are called hyper-preterists simply believe Christ returned even at that time. And the world continues to go on, but everything in Revelation was fulfilled by A.D. 70. Uh, just as a matter of definition, there are those who are called historists that believe throughout history the book of Revelation is being fulfilled, and it will continue to be fulfilled until the Lord returns. Uh, they view us as being somewhere around the sixth trumpet in terms of the development even today and there's still a few prophecies remaining to be fulfilled. There's another group that is in, called the idealist. They tend to view everything in Revelation as allegorical. In other, word is, in other words, it's a battle of good against evil, uh, and they view it as ongoing. Now, futurist is the fourth group, and I think that's probably where most evangelicals are today. They view everything in Revelation as remaining to be fulfilled, basically, or the part from chapter 4 through chapter 22, those uh, scriptures, those verses, and those chapters are still remaining to be fulfilled, or we are seeing even some fulfillment as we speak even today. So futurists are looking to the future for the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. Uh, as, as we move into the review, still, uh, we want to comment a little bit about uh, why we want to study Revelation. And that's spelled out for us. God promises us a blessing if we study His Word, specifically this book. It's called one of the seven Beatitudes of the book of Revelation. Christ gave ten when he was preaching on the mountainside in Israel. Uh, but here in the book of Revelation to John, he gives seven Beatitudes. And we're going to list those. We're going to put all of those up on the screen. And you're going to also see there an email address for me if you want to email uh, me and ask for a copy of that. I will try to email you a copy of those seven Beatitudes. You can also use that email address at Brother Cecil Burt at gmail.com to send questions to me about anything you would like regarding this study. So feel free to do that. But in chapter 1, verse 3, <clears throat> we see where it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. We see a blessing to those who read, and those who hear. Now keep in mind, during John's day, everyone did not have a copy of the Old Testament, and when the book of Revelation was written, everyone did not immediately have a copy of it. 
So scripture was passed on uh, verbally. Much of it was read in the synagogue and discussed. And many people even during that time were illiterate and could not read. So you're getting a blessing if you read it. You're getting a blessing if you hear it. But notice it says, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. That means we need to keep what God asks us to keep. We need to live as God wants us to live. We need to act as God wants us to act. And that needs to govern our daily lives. So I ask you this morning, are you living like God wants you to live? Are you keeping his word? Are you keeping the things that he has told you to keep all throughout his uh, word? And are you living accordingly? So that's something to ponder to think on, to discuss on, and uh, see if you're falling short in any, any regard. I know I do, and I think most of us do, and that's what we call sin. And we all have sin in our lives where we have fallen short of the glory of God and living the way He would want us to live. So ponder on that for a moment or two. But in continuing on in the discussion, we're not going to cover all of the seven Beatitudes. We'll cover them as we reach them uh, in, in the study of the Scriptures in Revelation as we move on. While we're at this point, we might want to mention how the book is presented in an outline form. The outline is really very simple, and the Lord outlines it for us. If you will turn over in Revelation to chapter 1, I believe it is verse 19, we will find the outline that was given to John about the book and how it is going to be presented. It says, Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now, when he's referring to the things that he has seen, it is referring to the things that Christ has revealed to him in chapter 1, which we're going to go back in just a moment, and we're going to look specifically at the description of our Lord and Savior that John sees in chapter 1. But that's what he has seen. What is is a reference to what he's going to be given, uh, the letters to the seven churches in Asia. And that's going to be basically chapters 2 and chapters 3. And then he is instructed to write the things that shall be hereafter. And that is where we look to the future. It is going to be certainly futuristic from when it was given to John around A.D. 90 or 95. And it's mostly, we believe, futuristic for even us today. But that's going to be from... Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 unto the end of the book in chapter 22. And that's going to be referring to the things which shall come hereafter. So let's, let's go back. I want to point out one other thing in review of chapter 1. And that is this, uh, this description of our Lord and Savior in this review. Let's look at that. Uh, John is on that Isle of Patmos. It says he was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Now, so many of us take that as meaning that Sunday. That's the Lord's Day. That's easily understood. That may be what he meant, and it may not be. He could have meaning he was in the Spirit. God had caught him up in a spiritual sense to see the day of the Lord. And that is a reference that's used in 2 Peter and in Joel, where it is a reference to the end of time, where it says the day of the Lord. And that could mean what John is experiencing. He was caught up in this vision, and it is being revealed to him, and that's how he is referring to the Lord's day. We're not sure exactly what he's talking about. It simply could mean the first day of the week, where Christians had come together because that was the day which Jesus rose again. And that would be what we call Sunday today. But in any event, 
And that's, I don't think, an important point to debate. We want to look at what he sees on the first day of the week or when he's caught up in the vision of the day of the Lord. And if we're going to begin by reading in uh, chapter 8. This is the Lord speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. You know, that's the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. You know, when we think of Jesus being, I am the Alpha, I am the beginning, we think of John 1.1, 1, 1, where it says basically, uh, you know, he was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the, he was the Word, and he was there in the very beginning. When we think of the end, we're thinking of the end of the book of Revelation, but that's certainly not the end of eternity, because eternity goes on forever. And Jesus is going to go on forever, and everyone else is going to go on forever. We think of our eternal souls. If we are saved, we'll spend eternity with Him in the blessedness of His presence in heaven. If we're lost, we'll spend eternity with the one we serve, Satan and his fallen angels, in eternal torment. So I ask you to think on that this morning. Have you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Will you spend eternity with Him? If not, Today is the day of salvation. But let me read on here in verse 9. I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation. He's writing to these seven churches and to all of us today, to all Christians, in tribulation. And in the kingdom and presence of Jesus Christ. We're also, if we're saved, in Christ's presence and we're in the kingdom of God. And was in that isle that is called Patmos. That's where he was exiled for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He was isolated there because of his preaching. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. This is Jesus speaking, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now we're going to look at these individual churches in our next lesson. We're going to review those that have already been discussed in our face-to-face -face text, but we'll begin with uh, chapter 3, uh, and that's the church at Sardis, uh, on lesson number three. Let's read on in verse 12. Here's what Jesus looked like. And, un, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now, those we're, we're, when we interpret Scripture, we're going to use the Bible to interpret itself in most cases. And when you ask, what are the seven golden candlesticks? That's going to be answered down in verse 20. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the, the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes were as flames of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. What are those seven stars? They're also defined in verse 20. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand on me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. That is a powerful statement. Jesus said, I was, and I, then I was dead, and now I'm alive forevermore. That is what our hope of salvation is in. I don't like to use the word hope, 
I believe that, I say, that is where my faith is. Uh, I trust Christ with my eternal soul. And uh, it, it is a word we use often. Our hope is in Christ. Certainly it is, because that's the only hope we have. Uh, reading on here says, again, write these things which you've seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in thy right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Now that defines what we had referred to earlier. I want to close by simply making the statement that as we focus here on these few verses, really specifically, verses 12 through 16, where Christ is described. Give that some study and discussion as you do your Bible study this week. Think on those things because each time he addresses a church, he uses one of these self-descriptive terms in identifying himself. So we will see all of these scriptures once again. That concludes chapter 1 and our study for today and our review for today. We ask you to prayerfully discuss this chapter and think on it and read chapter 2 in advance. We will be doing a review of the first few verses next week and a taping of our lesson. And we will be going down through some of these churches and the specific letters to them. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's close with a word of prayer. Holy God, we thank you again for this opportunity to discuss your word, to read it. Lord, we just pray that we will use it. Help us to use your word to guide our everyday thoughts and our everyday actions and help us to live in such a way that's pleasing to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today. Remember, you can find additional videos at these online locations. If you would like to give, you can mail your offering to First Baptist Church Brooklyn at P.O. Box 340 in Brooklyn, Mississippi, 39425. If you would like to talk to someone, you can call our church number or you can visit us for one of our in-person worship times. We hope to see you soon.